just like me and any other teacher, any other message that you hear. Anytime you hear a version of, you know, Earth game, uh, incarnations, uh, genetic uh, mutations, um, spirit, bot, spirit and body collaborations, I want you to not necessarily believe what I'm saying or what anyone else is saying. I want you to observe because it's very important that that I don't become your trust point. You stay your trust point. You remain in the value system of your discernment and your resonance. So why I'm giving you kind of this higher self story, and this is a collaboration story, basically, and I'll explain to you a little bit about how I channel in a minute, but it's basically like everybody's versions put into one version so that everybody feels kind of taken care of. It's almost like if you put everybody's religion into one book and you literally tried to mimic the truth, right? So that when you opened it, it would resonate, but it wouldn't take you away from your root belief systems. Okay, so what I do is I channel my higher self. My higher self is the version of me that resides on the other side of the veil, who remains pure positive consciousness, who doesn't get caught up in relationships or funk or belief systems or illness. It remains completely fully intact and speaks to me through the higher perspective of probabilities, possibilities, Akashic records, right? Time space continuums, which means past, present, future ideals. And then I, through my limited perspective, take in that data and somehow spit it out and give you guys kind of a scenario um, of what that could look like from your higher self. So my higher self, self speaks to your higher self. That's usually why when you find me, you binge watch me for a while because you're like, it's like she's talking to me. And really what I am is we're talking to each other, okay? And it's just a resonance pattern that we're communicating through. So all of the information that I get has not come from books or study or other teachers, although I might be saying some things that are identical or in alignment with some of your other teachers. And I may be way, way off as far as where some of you come from, if you're coming straight out of the church or coming from, you know, no religion, or if you're coming from, you know, different levels of consciousness teachings. So just hear me out and allow this to be story time. Allow yourself to step into the role of observer. Because when you are an observer, you're in a neutral state of being and neutral means new to my reality. So you stay out of, manifestation. You stay out of belief. You stay out of having everything to be a certain way and then controlling it. So I'm going to give you one story that will kind of help you navigate your journey back to yourself because it's all about enlightenment. We're lightening up. We're becoming less dense. We're moving into non, we're moving into non-duality, right? We're moving into more choice more opportunities, right? But it requires a healed person to be able to thrive in opportunities. Because when we are not healed, we do not thrive in opportunities. We freak out, right? We doubt, we worry, we judge, we isolate, we freeze. Because we can't trust getting it wrong one more time, right? Probably some of you guys clicking the buy now button on this workshop are like, this one better be it because I'm done, right? Well, I hope that this is it because this one was it for me, bottom line. You know, the warrior training was my workshop where it really got my behind in facing the mirror to take full responsibility of where I was being a victim and a perpetrator in relationships, okay? Um, it really helped me see where I had built my own inner narcissist to protect my inner child. It really showed me what kind of courage it was going to take me to be able to navigate through the rest of this ascension, through the rest of this enlightenment phase that we're in, and be able to be ready for this vision quest. 2020 is the year of vision. And like I said in the video I made earlier today, the vision comes on, guys. You're going to see the dirty room before you see heaven on earth. You're going to see the hoarding spaces of the collective mentality. You're going to see the darkest parts of this planet. It's going to shock you. It's going to disgust you. It's going to outrage you, and this is all normal. 
because the war has actually been being fought for a really long time, and I'll get there in the story. The war has been fought for a really long time, good, evil, light, dark, right? Because, because Earth, your home for this incarnation, is one of the most precious spaces in all of the universe. Earth is what's called a living library. Okay, now a living library is a library that is alive, right? And it holds the information, the content, the stories, the messages, the recipes, okay, the information of the entire universe right here on Earth in our crystals, our rocks, our sand, our water, right, our atmosphere, our bodies our animals, right? Our elements, everything is encoded into this beautiful place you call home. Now, that makes earth extremely desirable. It makes earth extremely valuable, okay? It makes earth the center point of the universe. And you happen to be here. And you think it's ghetto, right? You think it's a trash, but, but the cool thing about earth is that there are multi-dimensional realities occurring right here and now. There is an underworld, there's an overworld, there's an inner world, there's a parallel world, okay? There's a past world, there's a future world, there's a future you, there's a past you, there's a parallel you, all inhabiting earth right now right? Our home is legit awesome. We are in the living library. Now, in order for things to be read, right? You remember going to the old school libraries and it was like the books were this thick and you had to open them up and look for them, right? And now everything is like just in Google or YouTube, right? But before you'd have to actually go and find a book well, if you're doing research on any other planet on in the universe and you need to find out about, you know, gold or silver or, you know, crystals that only grow here or a certain type of animal or a certain type of resonance field or a, a vortex of energy or species, you actually have to come here old school and you got to look it up. And in order for you to look it up here, unless you are past the sixth dimension physically, you need to have a body, okay? Now, for a very long time, Earth has gone through different hierarchy of, of, of ownership, right? And it's funny because humans are the only species that actually have to pay to be here. Everybody else is working in harmony and their payment to be here is to be part of the life cycle of Earth, right? To incarnate as a bird, have that experience as a bird, leave behind the byproduct of the memory of being a bird in the collective vibration of earth now exists what is a bird right it actually exists in the field so instead of you looking at a book right the only encyclopedias and seeing a picture of a bird and the, the wikipedia of a bird a bird will incarnate from spirit become a bird have its beautiful experience for a few years move into its death experience and leave the blueprint as a harmony in the earth's patterns, right? So it's almost like the field of possibilities is there's an earth Akashic records and everything that's ever happened on earth still remains on earth. Now, how do we have such a big library when, you know, Everything is happening, incarnations. You know, at one point, maybe in another parallel reality, there's still dinosaurs. There was dinosaurs. We've seen ET ships, you know, created in rock formations in the Aboriginal cultures of Australia, right? We know that these things existed. And you will notice in the next two to five years, you guys, all of these old civilizations, all of these old truths will rise. The water is dropping. The towns, the cities, the civilizations, the true stories of Earth will begin to rise. But first, we have to get our eyes opened so that we will be able to see 
what is actually happening. So there's a lot that's going to be unfolding for us in the next few years once we've turned the lights on. Okay. So how the earth is able to hold so much data for so much collective vibration is she is a ascending and descending planet. Now, if you guys are in my academy, you're probably like, Jess, I already know this. But again, time over equals certainty. So the more you hear this and the more you understand who you are as a player in this game, the more confidence and security and safety you're going to have on this journey with me. So just uh, do me a solid and go along. So as Earth is an ascending planet and a descending planet, she is able to go from a one dimensional space all the way into a 12 dimensional space expand 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 and you currently are in the fifth wave of her ascension process okay you're along for the ride she's expanding 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 she's blowing out her walls right she's opening up her vortexes she's opening up everything right everything's opening up five dimensions more opportunities, more space, more choices, more awareness, more responsibility, right? So as she moves all the way to the 12th dimension, imagine what she can house in her collective while that's occurring. Because you guys have seen the pyramids. You've seen the, the, the skulls of the, the ancient giants. You've seen all the stories. You've maybe even witnessed some of these places in your travels and you're scratching your head and you're going, I don't get it. How can Earth house these creatures and these entities and this technology? And how how did you know the, the, the pyramids get built? Well, during one of Earth's ascension phases, right? As she's moving into a sixth dimensional space, it's the perfect home for six dimensional energies. Right. As she moves into the seventh dimensional, she moves, she makes space for seventh dimensional energies to house here. OK, so this cycle, you've heard that it all began with the amoeba. Well, let's back up to a one dimensional planet. And through that, as her expansion opened, it allowed space for galactic travel to utilize Earth to research, to study, to live, to um to create, right? Earth is one of the biggest Petri dishes in the universe. You know, if you ever want to blend genetics, you come here. And that's exactly what the humanoid is at the last stage of the last ascension process. The human was designed from the last ascension. OK, so the Earth can move into 12 dimensions. And if you're not sure what a dimension is, you know, you're, you guys are totally able to ask questions in the chat. Now, while I'm channeling, I won't be able to stop my flow and get in there, but I will definitely take all of your information and do a question and answer for you guys so that you don't get too far behind. Um, a dimension is basically a different radio station. Let's keep it real simple, right? There's country, there's rock and roll, there's rap. So we're not giving one dimension any more power or influence over the other. We're just saying that the, the light that is capable of housing in as density lowers, one dimension is like a, a rock, right? Or an organism. And then all of a sudden in the second dimension, we are birthing more and more space and bigger forms of consciousness can inhabit that space well you probably unless you were born yesterday you came into earth's carnation during her last phase of her third dimensional cycle okay now because earth is a living library and it houses every type of creature species in the universe somewhere right hiding whether it's in a plant a flower an animal right in the air underneath the ground Every, every species in the universe exists on Earth, even if you can't see them, right? Because as you move into a higher dimensional awareness and you shift your own body, you can begin to walk in and out of different worlds, right? 
the fairy realm, the underworld, the overworld, the galactic world all exist in this time and space. Now I'm trying to keep this a linear presentation, although when you look at this from a six dimensional space, it looks nothing like I'm describing, but this is the linear example best that I can give you to help your physical brain understand our journey together this time. Okay, so as Earth has been expanding, 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 she's getting all this PhD information because these bigger beings and this bigger level of consciousness can exist, will exist, will create, right? Will utilize Earth for its own purposes because it knows that after she gets to the 12th dimension, just like a star, ex and instead of exploding, she will contract, just like a uterus, you guys. So it will expand, contract, expand, contract. So it can birth what? What is the purpose of Earth being a living library who moves all the way from a one dimensional space all the way to a 12 dimensional space back to a one dimensional space? What would be the purpose of that? Library. Here's what, here's what happens. So as she moves into the 12th dimension, she has her full expansive full expansive experience. She gets every side of the universe. She gets to house every being in the universe, every experience that needs to be had from both light and dark and good and bad is experienced on earth in a beautiful tale of free will. Everything goes here. There are no limits. There are no bad guys. There are no good guys. There just isness of different aspects of different parts of creation, different levels of density, different levels of awareness, different levels of knowledge, and different levels of ignorance, because that's what makes the story complete. Without having the story of ignorance, you would not have the story of wisdom. You need all the stories. So everything is allowed here, everything. Now, now you're make, making more sense of why you think this place is trash, right? But as she moves to the 12th dimension, she completes her cycle. Now, as she completes her cycle, which is a cycle that you're going through within your incarnation on this planet, she is expanding so that she can get the whole totality of existence experiments, and she's going to collapse the, collapse the wave. Now, when she collapses this wave, it's going to be like compressed data. So if you've ever sunk all 12,000 of your pictures onto a zip drive, that's what she does when she contracts. She's going to contract in all of everyone's experiences, all of the, the, um, the, your experience, your life experience, the dolphin's life experience, the war that had, you know, the things that went on during her 12-step process, right? And then she's going to basically contract like this zoom, back into the first dimension and she'll do it all over again. And she'll keep creating those zip drives and zip drives and zip drives and zip drives. Now, one of the byproducts of deascension and reascension is it creates such fertile ground. OK, if you've ever talked to a farmer, they can't keep growing things over and over and over again. They've got to take a season off. They got to let the minerals recalibrate. But growing keeps the land healthy. So what this, what our planet creates, in, and it, it is why our planet has been controlled for so long, is our planet actually creates essential and precious metals that are not found or grown in other planetary systems that are and used to create immortality, vital energy, you know, wars, um, weapons, um, technologies, right? You think that we might be unevolved, but there are things on this planet that are needed because it's the library. It's like the Amazon, you know, prime of the universe. You can get anything here in three days. And because of the contraction and expansion, this planet produces a lot of gold, a lot of silver, a lot of crystal, a lot of sand, a lot of rock, a lot of bone, okay? 
a lot of remnants of her ascension process. Now imagine, you know, you might be sitting with some crystals in your house that are from Lemuria. They're from the Palladians. They're from, um, you know, Sirius. You may have them that were brought here or built here, created here and grown here and harvested here. And they may have a message for you because everything is a zip drive. That blade of grass outside of your house is a zip drive of the whole entire universe. Now, here's the coolest thing about Earth being the library. You know, she is the macro of the universe itself. She is the storyteller. She is the library. She is the great mother. She is that grandmother. You go sit on your lap and tell me the stories of the, you know, the universe in the third dimension. Tell me the stories of the universe in the fifth dimension, right? And that's why we've come. Now, let's talk a little bit about the human body that you've come into. Because you need to know how to play this game if you're going to make it through your vision quest. Because that's all it is. is it's just a game. You're just playing a game. It's a good game of chess. Right? You're going to have to learn to play this game on this journey. But we've got 11 weeks. You are going to be a master of enlightenment, ascension, and knowledge when we are done. So let's talk human bodies. Your human body is the most advanced supercomputer. It's a quantum super biocomputer. It was created to expand and contract just like Earth. It was created to be able to go all the way from one dimension all the way to 12 dimensions through access points of DNA just like Mother Earth has, okay? Just like Mother Earth is being owned and operated currently through the higher presence of source energy, your body is the micro of the entire universe, okay? So your body contains in your blood, in your bones, in your muscles, in your cells, in your subatomic structures, the secrets of the universe. And your body was designed and built to be able to fully ascend to the 12th dimension in bodied. Now, it will turn into a light body eventually, where you'll just look like a glowing blob, blob of light. But we've got time to move into the superhero phase and have some good parties before that. Okay? So your body was created as a genetic experience, an experiment. Very important that you're aware of this. So after the last ascension and the deascension, right? Obviously, you've heard the stories of, of Atlantis. You've heard the stories of the Anunnaki. You've heard the stories of the hierarchy of the, you know, the Illuminati. You know, a lot of it is uh, still very present in our world. And you have to understand that as she has moved through her system of ascension, there has been lots and lots and lots and lots of battles here over ownership, okay, over rights, over the metals, over the golds, over the silvers, over the diamonds, over the crystals, over the water, over the plants, and more importantly, over its humans, okay? So after the last ascension process and the earth was nearly destroyed, okay, destroying much of the living library, a lot of other universes came to species came to earth to replant the data for the living library. So if we blew up, you know, the crystals from Palladians, the Palladians have brought back their crystals and buried them somewhere because we are in full swing. We are in the motion of the fifth dimension. Now, why would they come back to plant their crystals and plant their animals and their beings and their nature and their sounds? and their light codes. Why would they plant them here? Because if anything happened to their planet, they want their stories told. And you sitting in that body is an elder of your own civilization. You've come to help Earth move all the way into her ascension process intact. 
you come from a certain place in time to make sure the prophecy of this ascension process stays in this time. And it was a very, very close go. And it almost didn't happen until the star seeds showed up in the 80s. Okay. Um, they actually came way before then, but they were trickling in. And I'm going to talk about the star seeds. I'm going to talk about the Christ consciousness because, again, however it fits your belief system, it doesn't matter to me. Take what resonates as far as this story. Okay. And I'm emotional because I'm talking to all of you elders out there. And you will begin to remember who you are as the veil drops. And this will all make sense. That's why it's so important that you learn how to be human. Because if you don't learn how to be human, you will continue to resist being here. And you will never truly integrate your mission. You will never truly take ownership of your role here. And you won't make it into the higher vibrations. You'll get caught up in the storyline. You'll get caught up in the game. You'll get caught up in the lower vibrations that don't match your physical reality. So your bodies were created for this ascension. It was a grand experiment, a grand design of DNA to bring seven different strands of, of um information and 12 strands of DNA together from different star systems, okay? So each of your chakras represent a different star system or collective, okay? Um, each one of your chakras was gifted to you to utilize your own personal expansion and live as the living library. Now, some of the uh, chakra systems and energy that was put into the genetic experiment would be not considered of the light. Some of the DNA that you have sitting in your body is not from the light. So I always teach my class, it's like an angel and a demon, right? Built one body. And then you brought your consciousness into it and you're trying to navigate those waters. You got the devil on your shoulder. You got the angel on your shoulder. You don't know why you do certain things, but your body was literally designed to be both heaven and hell because those places are a state of the mind. So as your DNA and your chakra systems were gifted to you, right, by all these different star systems, and I will actually go in and answer the questions on exactly which ones are which. But I will tell you this, that who donated your root chakra is the reptilian collective have donated their chakra energy to you because it represents unity or what they call the hive mind, oneness, right? It also represents survival. It also represents early development, right? Because if you look at a hive mind, it is hierarchy and they're working with a queen. But see, you have the queen, the high priestess, the king right on top of you. So you are one system, right? So I don't want you to be like, oh, reptilian in my root. That's why I'm so blocked. No, it was a gift and it stays completely in a neutral capacity which means there are a lot of benevolent reptilians. It's just the donation of the Wi-Fi collective satellite Akashic informational vortex that you call the root chakra, okay? Now, as we move up, each chakra was donated from a different star system or a different genetic species to help the human fully ascend within their own unified spectrum of love, which means there's gonna be good and bad built and hardwired into you. And your job on earth is not to go fight the battles outside of you, but to get everybody to play nice and to move into non-duality. So everything negative is a shortcut and every limit is a possibility and every darkness is our alchemy. It's our magic, it's our power right? Your greatest moments have not come from the easy breezy states. They have come from your pressurized points, 
okay? So you have this DNA that's been sitting and given to you through this genetic experiment all the way up to the crown, right? Your crown chakra represents source energy. It represents the knowing, okay? It represents the I am, okay? And I will go in and give you guys all of the list of each ET that donated their um, DNA because I know inquiring minds want to know. I just don't want to waste your session going into that when that can be just in a note form in an outline for you to be able to review and revise. Um, I've got someone taking notes in class, so there will be a summary after each class. Thank you very much, Zoe. Okay, so back to your DNA. Now, your DNA is the active ingredient in your ascension process. It is not just, you know, mom's hips and dad's eyes. It is the entire universe. And when you incarnate on the third dimension, you only have two of those DNA activation points that are awake, two, right? And you, the third one is trying to turn on because, well, we're in the third dimension. So two, basically, I am that I am and I can procreate. I'm a good hard worker and I'm easy slave material. I don't think for myself. I'm okay with slavery. I am that I am that I am. Okay. And for a really long time, while this planet is in the third dimension, higher level beings would come to earth and use humans as slaves to get gold, right? To get the silver, to harvest the crystals, to harvest the plants, to make the tinctures, so that they could be taken off planet and used in their own civilizations and galaxies, right? We're cheap labor, guys, until our DNA starts to wake up. Now, as soon as that third point of activation begins, that happened probably with you like a force in 2012, you began to know more than I am that I am that I'm not. You began to question that. You became a threat because. It isn't a threat when you do as you're told. You are a threat when you question why you have to do what you're told. And in 2012, it was like the grand light of the DNA part three began to awaken all over the planet. Now, hasn't woken for everybody because this is a free will place. If I choose to vibrate at a very low frequency and continue to choose lack and to continue to choose suffering, and to be, you know, a victim and a perpetrator of my own life and others, I will not get that update, that activation. I will not be able to turn my DNA on. Okay. You guys have all experienced this with your smartphones. You have a smartphone and you're going along great and you learn how it works. And then Apple or Samsung or whatever, they send you a it's time to update your phone message. And you go, ah! Because you know everything's going to change. But what they're saying is, is let me give you a cooler, faster way to run your phone. And you're usually in kind of like, oh, not now. So you blow it off, you blow it off, you blow it off. So stop judging the people that are blowing off their upgrades. They're not ready to take it. They want the iPhone 6, right? They know how to push the buttons. They know how to call. They don't want all the bells and whistles that you've come to play with. You, They don't want the better, faster working body. They don't want the Ferrari that's a high performance vehicle. They want the old Buick pickup truck because it can eat anything and go anywhere and can be outside and get rusty and nobody cares about it, right? You see a lot of those at Walmart. It's like that energy of just, I don't care, okay? Those are people who are not taking the updates on the phone. So you are choosing to take these updates and all it's doing is increasing your level of awareness, right? Now, Whatever you do with that awareness, because this is a bio learning computer, which means you get the awareness, you get the update on your phone, but it's the user, the consciousness, who has to learn how to use that phone now. So you've actually been updated with things in your hard drive and in your software program of your whole human suit that you don't even know are there yet, right? Your ability to be telepathic, kinetic, you know, kinetic, be able to move things with your mind, it all exists in the third upgrade. And half of the planet's not even using those yet. Clairvoyance, clairaudio, clairsentient, right? Empathic, 
clear, um, what are other words? Clear audio, clear sentience, clairvoyance. I know there's four. Um, I'll get it. It'll come back around. Um, those are really at the baseline of the third dimensional activation. So those are not our woo, crazy spiritual gifts. Can you imagine what's coming? All right. Now in the fourth dimension, which we've been idling in this whole entire time since 2012, right? It was almost like in 2012, the universe was like, okay, the third dimension's ending. I'm going to give you guys a few years to collect your stuff, learn your new upgrades, go through boot camp, get your behinds kicked, leave toxic relationships because the bridge of fourth dimension isn't technically a dimension. It's bridge. It's an elevator. It's going to take you to the fifth dimension. Now, the fifth dimension is where you start using those upgrades, those updates. You start playing with your energy field. You start to download from higher places because you're moving out of density. Now, density keeps you ignorant. As long as you've got two activation points in your DNA, you're going to argue your belief systems. You're, you're going to rage on people who have a different color skin than you. You are going to hate everything that makes you uncomfortable. You're going to judge everyone around you that doesn't see things the way you do because you are trying to protect what is yours. It is a very much a victim, perpetrator, and survival place of awareness. It is a very, very small, low conscious place. Now, as soon as you get to the third, you start to ask questions, you start to get curious, you start to read, you start to discover, you start to devour information, you start to attract teachers and books and CDs and curriculum that feed that thread that you begin to pull on. And all of a sudden, you've gone from one rabbit hole to the next rabbit hole, from one certification to the next certification, and you are well on your way into the bridge of higher level consciousness. Now, because your body is has full capacity to move into a phase of 12 dimensions, right, out of free will choice, which means, yes, my body has the ability to go from an iPhone 6 to an iPhone 12, right? Doesn't mean I'm going to take the update. Doesn't mean I'm going to do my work. Doesn't mean I'm going to take responsibility for my level of consciousness. Doesn't mean I'm going to activate the planes of the heart field and the coherence of the gut brain and the, the heart brain and the brain brain in synchronicity of the me, myself, and I, because this is my choice. And I know that's pulling on your heartstrings big time, guys, right now, because you're steadily walking across the bridge and you're leaving people behind, metaphorically. Mom's not believing what you're believing. Even though she can talk to talk, she's not walking the walk. And we know that everyone is saying, yeah, I want to go. I want to go with you on this bridge. I want to go with you on this cruise. I want to go to heaven with you. But you'll notice that people's actions are not speaking as loud as their words, which means they're not actually showing up. They're not getting on the bridge. And it's heartbreaking. And it's one of the pitfalls of your consciousness is because you are so loving and you've learned that love is pain on this planet. You keep those cords connected and you stay searching and pulling and wishing and hoping that you're going to get to the other side. But the third dimensional belief system holds you back okay so we're at a phase right now of the fourth fifth six dimensions opening right earth is already moving she's been in 5d she's moving into her collective preemie stages of opening up six dimensional gateways you guys hear for a long time disclosure 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 the aliens are coming the aliens are coming all true stories in a good way, by the time you guys are done with this, you're going to be pros at understanding what that all means. In the sixth dimension, there is complete access. It's going to turn into a giant airport. Of Sixth dimension is, is like a galactic airport, which means that different beings of light from the twelfth dimension can inhabit a sixth dimensional space. A third dimensional being can inhabit a sixth dimensional space. OK, which means that we literally can start to blend worlds once we move into a six dimensional collective. Now, doesn't mean you will see that because your eyes, your hardware, your five senses are attuned to your belief systems. You only have access to what you believe. OK, 
that's why you've been going on this like starvation hunger like major learning process over the years you can't get enough you can't get enough you can't get enough but it's all been in divine plan of you gaining access to higher levels of awareness through your curiosity curiosity is one of the most advanced frequencies of earth because it's a library you're here to study right it's one of the things you came here to do was study the animals study the nature study each other you didn't come to get all caught up in the, the you know the soap opera of earth so let's talk about consciousness versus a body because i just discussed a body of the body that was created out of a very precise experiment to house the most expansive extraterrestrial dna in the universe and the lowest forms of consciousness in one body okay so you have source energy and you have the nothingness all within your body frame you have full ability to go wherever you want you have the vip space suit vip now you have to gain access to that by doing the work because you have the key that opens up the doors to you know the the, the clubs with the bottle service and stuff like that You've got to get the access there, which means you've got to walk the walk. You've got to turn the DNA on. You've got to activate yourself. You've got to remember yourself. And the more you're working on yourself, the faster those upgrades take, the more data comes in, the more you remember, the more you start working with your physical body, which is what we're going to be doing a lot in quantum fitness, turning things on, turning things off, right? Learning to use, it's like IT programming for the physical bio suit. We're not working out, we're working in, we're getting metaphysically fit. So you have this very advanced body that was created out of basically seven different species from different star systems. And you have 12 strands of DNA that were gifted to you through source energy to turn the lights on in your body to bring you into superhuman next, super consciousness super source energy that is going to be your path to ascension you're going to first move out of slavery then you're going to move into awareness that i am that i can be that i am that i am creator i am supernatural i am superhuman i am super advanced i am super light i am super conscious you will move all the way back into source energy and then you may come and do it all over again because it's super fun right so you've all been a rock, you've all been a bug, you've all had these different incarnations all throughout the universe because time doesn't truly exist. So you're having all these different exciting adventures within yourself and then you're storing them at a biological place in your Akashic records through the universe that you can access at any time. And that's how I know what I know. As soon as my activation was complete, I had access to everybody's business, which is overwhelming at times. but. I'm learning to work with it. And this workshop is very healthy for me because it gives me a platform to bleh, right? So it's this kind of regurgitation process that happens for me. It's really healthy. Throw chakra, right? So as your body is turning back on and turning back up, you are having different experiences. Now, as more light and photonic energy at, has access and entrance of the planet because she's moving into a higher dimensional space which means she's becoming less dense that's why time feels faster you know certain places feel hotter certain places feel colder because there's contracted energy there's expanded energy water levels are rising and they're lowering and the weather is crazy it's freezing in australia and it's hot in europe or hot in england right we're in crazy times because she's moving into her detox of the fourth and fifth dimension to make space for the sixth dimension which means technically this is not a three-dimensional planet anymore so if you're still using your iphone 6 right you're not probably having very fun very much fun on this planet yet because you haven't taken the upgrades you know, and what would keep you from taking your upgrades? Obviously, I've taught this a million times. You've got shame stored in your body, which we're going to pull out. 
You've got guilt stuck in your body, which we're going to pull out. You've got resentment. You've got fear, right? Doubt, worry, judgment, okay? Lack of trust, right? You don't have the relationship with your body that is required to turn it on because you turn it on from the inside. It does not get turned on by the outside. You're using the outside as an inspiration to discern and decide what you want to do and how to turn it on within yourself because you forgot, or you're using the outside to trigger yourself to find the pain that you have hidden from yourself to reactivate because it can't it can't get triggered if you're not loaded with something. And so that's what your outside reflection is in your virtual reality game. Now, let's talk about the holographic experience of Earth, okay? Now, Earth is obviously the living lab library where dimensions upon dimensions, but, but, uh, parallel realities upon parallel realities all exist on Earth, which means you think that your grocery store is here and there and there and there, but that's just because your five senses are acclimated to your third dimensional reality. And when your clairs open up, you will see that there is not as much empty space as you're looking at. There is beings and energies and vortexes and wormholes and airports and technologies and presences in every corner of this planet at all times. But for learning experiences, you get a third dimensional filter so that you can navigate your individual experience because if you saw all of that it might be way too distracting and you would never actually do your purpose it's almost like if they sent a research specialist to earth and said okay just find gold don't get distracted right and you get here and you see elephants and you see you know whales and you totally forget about the gold because everything is so interesting that you're off mission and that's what happens to us a lot now our definition of interesting is fun because it's usually more painful because you're distracted because, you know, you've got a, a abusive mother or whatever, and you get sucked in to the vibration of that story. And because when you incarnate, part of the game experience of virtual reality is that you will go into a greed upon um, forget program which means you come in and have amnesia. Otherwise, it, the game would be pointless. You know, you're either here on reconnaissance, uh, you're here on uh, research, you're here on healing, you're here as a medic, you're here as a healer, you're here as a teacher, you're here as a doctor, you're here as a leader, you're here for something. You may not be here in the same way that I am. I have a teacher training program of 30 people and I haven't met anyone that's literally designed to do the exact job that I'm doing. We're all part of a huge puzzle, right? So the, the holographic experience of Earth is set up like this. You agree before you incarnate to choose a reality that is going to best amplify and awaken and complete your individual process, which means you've been playing different games all over the world and you have unfinished business in the universe. OK, Earth is kind of where you come to finish your business. OK, you come here to complete because this is an ascension process. This is an ascension school and you can get your certification in ascension by living here, having the, exam the experiences. So if I am coming to Earth fully, fully mastered all the way through my ascension process, but things in my reality or in my Akashic records, which is your giant. Um, your giant giant memory bank, right, of every incarnation, every experience that you've ever had that's all in the field of probabilities. It's like tiny, tiny mega bits of data that are stored within your consciousness that you have access to all remain, right? Now, the, the universe has the Akashic Records too, but we won't confuse you today. Most of you know about that, but it's okay if you don't. That the holographic Earth experience is that you agree that you will come to Earth as the video game. If you haven't seen that movie Jumanji, especially the part two one with The Rock um, and Kevin Hart, where they come and they basically have different bodies and they have limits and they have potentials and they have to basically save the planet before they can go back home. It's 
it's a very fun metaphor to think about what star seeds are doing here. Right, so if I'm fully ascended or if I'm in a future presence and I look back at what Earth is going through and I'm like, she's not gonna make it unless I go back there and help guide people across this bridge, I already know how it works because in another parallel reality, we've already moved into the sixth, seventh dimension. We've already won this battle. We've already moved past this. Let me incarnate from the future back tense into a body and let me do this all over again. And while I'm here, I'll work out some old karmic energy that I have unfinished business. So I have some unfinished business of, I don't know, six lifetimes to the left where I didn't feel lovable. And in this incarnation, I, because I'm coming to be on mission, I would also like to feel lovable, right? Because this is really a business trip that you're on. And while you're on a business trip, you also want to have a little socialization. You want to, you know, see your friends that are in town. You want to, you know, have some social time. So you're on a mission, but you're also on a physical mission to complete some processes. It's almost like, let me go to Earth. Let me help save the world. And while I'm there, let me see my old twin flame who did me dirty 16 lifetimes ago. And let me get the last word this time. Right. So you fall madly in love with them and blah, blah, blah. And you get the last word because they have a soul contract to show up for you exi again exactly the way they did the last time you left them and it's been uneasy in your heart so you recreate it you know i i decided to come in and make my life very very hard with the parents that i created but i obviously had a lot of things to work out as i was working in it it really upped my ante and forced me into my intuition and my imagination very very young and now i see that without those parents pushing me into myself constantly, I would not have access to the data and information that I have right now. So the holographic experience of Earth is that you are playing a virtual reality game. And when this incarnation is over, you will literally wake up. And for a few minutes, it will be really rich and it will be really intense and it will feel really real. Like that last dream you had when your boyfriend cheated on you and you looked at him sideways all day and you were like, I know what you did. It feels that real, but after a few energy movements, it's like dissipates and it just becomes part of your Akashic record and you move back into your next experience. So all of you guys that are taking everything so dang personally, lighten up. It is, is your time to enjoy the game. And I wanna take you into the vision quest to help you get out of your own way and to rip down the walls that you have created in front of your heart and in front of your abundance, in front of your awareness, so that you can be the creator of the game instead of the archetype of the game. Because the game that's being played right now is no fun if you don't know how to play. It is also no fun if you don't have biohacks and cheat codes and algorithms and cool suits to change into and coins to buy things with right it's so much more fun when you have all of the extras it's about that five star video game instead of that little basic video game right and you have the capabilities right now to be able to play that so this virtual reality or game you got you had a purpose of why you came to earth whether it was to save it nurture it love it fix it, collect from it, harvest from it, learn from it. That's your soul mission. Then you have an earth mission. Let me get right with my mom. Let me, you know, get the last word with my twin flame. Let me see what it feels like to be a mother. Let me see what it feels like to not be a mother, right? Let me have these experiences so that I can wrap them up and compress them into my Akash because that's the thing that's missing. That's the thing that's incomplete in my Akashic records. And while I'm here, I get to slow my spirit all the way down so that I can taste food and I can be hungry and I can witness things and I can feel things and I can emotionally experience things. Because when you're in a fast moving spirit realm, you don't feel anything except excitement and love, right? So you came to feel the opposite so that when you did feel the excitement of the fifth dimensional energy coming home to yourself, it would feel like a big relief because you've been pressurized for the first 20, 30, 40 years of your life. Okay. So this holographic universe that you're in 
is your own. Yours is different than mine. Mine is different than yours. No two people are having the same experience on earth at all. I don't care if they're twins. I don't care if they're conjoined twins. I don't care if they share a brain. They're having a different experience because they're focused in different points. And if wherever you're focused is your experience. So the same thing can be happening to two people and they will have a different universal experience about it. They also have different collective vibrational karma within them. So they're going to experience those things different. There's a lot of children that experience trauma who literally use it to create purpose. There's a lot of kids that experience trauma who use it to create destruction. It depends on what role you're here to play. Okay. So you've got seven essences of alien DNA sitting in your body. You've got 12 uh, DNA helox that are lighting up when you go, when you are allowing them to. Yes, you can go faster. Yes, you can. Um, that's when you get lonely. You're like, where is everybody? I feel like nobody can understand what I'm saying. You're lighting up, guys. You're taking the upgrades. Nobody else has the same phone as you right now, and that's okay. Okay? So when you get caught up, in your soul contract stories and your metaphors of earth, you're really slowing yourself down. But I'm not saying that your trauma and your stories are not real and valid because you did come here to clear your karmic energy. This is the this is the incarnation of karmic resolve. You're here to resolve and balance your karma, right? You're here to help nurture, save, research Mother Earth. You've got lots of different perspectives going on, okay? You're here to evolve all the way into the 12th collective if you choose. Now, you have the capability of remaining in one incarnation to do that. You don't have to have a death experience in the physical form in order to evolve all the way to the 12th dimension, which is why I want to teach you guys how your multidimensional suits work because your aging process begins to slow down and eventually stop when you move from a carbon-based body into a crystal body. Because there's crystals on this planet that are as old as the planet. And you, by definition, are actually a crystal. Okay? So that's why star seeds are here, is research, help, reconnaissance. Okay? All different missions. That's why no two people are the same. That's why stop looking at anyone else's paper about what they're creating, because you did not come here to create that. You came here to heal the body of its old slavery programs. You came here to balance frequency and vibration within your field. You came for a very specific soul mission. You came here for karmic resolve and you came doing it all in a holographic experience that could be very fast in the eyes of spirit where you could literally go play a game, finish it, and then decide that which you are based in the experience you have. Because we know that all major experiences completely change the face of our consciousness. You have a baby, you're different. You have a toxic relationship, you're different, right? So you're having lifetimes after lifetimes after lifetimes of lifetimes of alterations of consciousness. You're going through that, that caterpillar butterfly effect 10 different ways before you even stop your incarnation process on earth, right? So bear with me as we go along this journey because I, I know you're like, where's the vision quest? This is the backstory. You guys need the backstory in order to understand how to play the game of chess because you have to know what you're up against. And what you're up against is the darkness that exists in the universe that's housed in your physical body, okay? It is in your physical body and it is using consciousness, your consciousness, to play out its rhythms because that's what it was designed to do. Just like an eagle is designed to swoop down and eat a baby mouse. And you're looking at that like, oh my gosh, he just ate that mouse. Yet when it happens in the higher realms of earth with humans, we are disgusted and we are like, we are terrified. But you have to remember that earth is a multidimensional home. So an eagle to a mouse could be the same as a different species of humanoid right? Preying on children. Yes, we will be talking about all of that because you guys need to know you're in the vision quest. It's 2020. It's the year the lights come on. So I'm going to take you into the lighted space of your own consciousness so you can recalibrate and repair and reboot and reorganize and reclaim 
your true essence. And that is, let's move into the fifth stage of our DNA activation and become the supernatural beings that can truly lead a nation and a world out of slavery. Okay, this is our job now. You came here for a specific reason from a specific time in space for a reason that maybe only you will understand when you get onto the other side. So story of earth, the story of your body, the story of what your chakras truly are. There's satellite systems using to communicate and connect with vibrational alignments to help you ascend. Okay. There is precious metal in your body. So yes, you've been harvested or you could be or have been. Okay. Not that different than harvesting from rock when you look at it from a higher different perspective of density. So we need to let all of our issues go with what is coming to light right now and look at it as observers who are here on a mission to move back into the state of love and harmonize with our DNA to elevate the consciousness of humanity through our own presence and ripple effect to activate the rest of the planet. Because when we move into a full 5D presence of our bodies, you guys, we become human tuning forks, which means we are vibrating love. And if you stand next to me, I'm going to vibrate love into you. And if you, vi if I'm vibrating love, this piece of pizza that I'm going to eat is going to turn into love before I eat it. Okay. Because you actually came here to have a really good time. You were like, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. And you did not come here to have allergies and sensitivities and, you know, be an introvert and hate people. And you didn't come here for that. You came as one of the highest aware beings in the universe, slowed your vibration all the way down into a very small point and had the opportunity to ascend in one lifetime. So let's do that. All right. So this is our first adventure together. I know you have questions. You can put them in the chat that I believe that we have. So next week, I'm going to wrap up the virtual reality game. Okay. We're going to go deeper into the human body and we're going to go start getting deep into your stories, right? Because in week three, we begin to build out the, the vision quest game itself so that you can navigate to your treasure map of higher self, integrate, learn how to integrate ego into a new job and move it from saboteur to personal assistance and be able to channel your inner child's joy and, and adventure into desire that you will need, okay? The little class that I gave this morning or a little video that I made today, I said, you know, you're in a vision class and you've got two eyes and they are to see. You've got one eye to know, and you got two eyes to see. Your first job this week is to really notice where the eye of your storm is because things are going to get a lot worse before they get better, guys. Everything is going through a detox right now on planet Earth, and we know that the healing is worse than the wound, the healing process. The detox can be unbearable. We say things we don't mean, right? We do things that we would never do when our addictions and our avoidances are taken away. We learn that in our I am training. When we are taking away our addictions and our avoidances, we can go cuckoo for a while. So you're going to watch the planet go cuckoo and exactly why you are going to be on your vision quest. So when you complete your vision quest, you can be the new quantum doctors, the new quantum leaders, the new quantum healers, the teachers, the way showers, the, um, the guides, the huggers, the lovers. OK, so that is going to be next week. Um, thank you guys all for joining me right here in our little home, our website. Um, and next week, we're going to be diving into your virtual reality game on Earth.